One of the reasons President Trump says we need the wall is to stop drugs from crossing the border into this country. Those who are on uh, the front lines of the opioid epidemic say they don't have time to even think about the problem at the national level because they're dealing with it here in the streets and in the communities. In places like Frederick, Maryland, where last month alone eight people died from opioids, another 18 overdose cases were reported, and that's the number of people revived from Narcan. There are likely a lot more than those 18 who overdosed. Those cases were not reported. We've been covering the opioid epidemic here on Offscript since the beginning. Lots of families have come here from the city to the suburbs and smaller towns to share their stories of addiction, recovery, and their losses. Joining me tonight, Tina Johnson. She lost her son, Cooper, and brother, Tyler, to opioids. Her sister, Mikey Rakick, is also here. And Karen Miller, you've seen her before here. She's with the, com uh, the community liaison with Emerge Recovery Center. Ladies, thank you very much for joining me. Tell me about your loss. Um, my uh, son, what I want to talk about is the overprescribing of um, the opioid epidemic because my son had never used anything prior to that and goes to um, a doctor and they prescribed him medication before they even gave him a diagnosis. He Did he have an out. injury? No, my son was very athletic. Um, so he, something was wrong with his neck, so he went in there um, and I've known him and several other people who walked out with a script that day, a prescription, without even being diagnosed from some of these pain management locations. They're all over, not just Frederick County, they're all over. So I wanted to try to address and find a, a way to stop this from happening. Tell our viewers about the young man we're seeing. This, this is my, my son. He's, uh, he was very smart, athletic. How old? Um, he was 27. Okay. He's a father. He has a son who's seven years old. Mm -hmm. um, he's very caring, giving, loving. Um, and um, we miss him. And then this is my sister with my brother. Right. Mikey, Mike, tell, tell me about that picture there. Uh, this is my brother, Tyler. Um, he also never really had a problem up until like uh, two years ago when he was also able to walk into an urgent care center and get prescriptions prescribed to him that he did not need. Um, he was a hard worker. He uh, helped supervise a construction company, ran a great all, um, a loving uncle, a wonderful son. He is the youngest of six children, the only boy. Um, and uh, he was 28 years old, funny. Amazing. And the difficult part for the two of you, how did it end? What was it like, the final days, weeks? So um, when my brother, he was uh, found and it took four days inside the hospital and it was very hard. It was excruciating. But prior to that, he had also tried to get into rehab and they turned him away. He called and they said, well, we're sorry, we're, we're not going to be treating that type of issue and they turned him away and a month later he was gone. Okay. Six, six weeks later my nephew mm -hmm. passed. Um, uh, you know, what we really want people to understand is that um, these are, they, they're normal people contributing to society in many positive ways and there's a major stigma on addiction. And I feel like if my brother was not turned away and if my nephew wasn't able to just walk into a um, facility and and get some pain medicine they would still be here today. Karen is this about treatment on demand? What is this about? Yes mm -hmm. this is and we have such a sore lack of that um, throughout the nation but specifically in Western Maryland it's very difficult to get treatment um, any type of resources or services. Is this because people don't have insurance or they don't have the facilities they don't have the beds I mean both and typically it's a two to three week wait for treatment um, we do have a f fantastic program in Anne Arundel County, which is a safe station. You can walk right in. Apparently, you have to be a resident. But all of the uh, counties need to introduce a program such as the safe stations at Anne Arundel we County. We appreciate has. all you do. How, how many cases have you seen like this, you know, where people didn't make it to treatment? Hundreds, hundreds. I've been doing this for six years, helping people get into treatment if possible. And it's very sad. Um, because there are insurance barriers, there are time restraints for people to be able to try to get in to get help. And many times there's been families who reached out and before they could get into treatment, we've lost them okay. to overdose. Okay, and, and for, for people who are watching this, whether you're talking legislators, whether you're talking the governor, whether you're talking private insurance companies, what do they need to do right now? 
The governor's done a fantastic job. Thank you, Governor Hogan, for all you've done to give us funding. Um, unfortunately, it's not enough because we don't have that treatment on demand. Right. And so we need to look at it at a federal federal level and try to get more funding through the feds. I've heard of cases grants. where people are actually being driven out of state, you know, to, to, to get treatment. That's yes. still going on. Yes, and I do work for a recovery center out of Boynton Beach, Florida called Emerge, right. and that's where I typically try to send my um, insured patients. Gotcha. But Medicaid won't cover out-of-state uh, treatment. Okay. Our condolences and, and stay at it. You know, we're going to stay at it too. Thank you Thank very you much. Very much. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce.